film sensei here. Today in this video, we're going... Uh, oh, hold on for just a second. Yes, yes my lord. Order 66. Is that ham on rye or wheat toast? Ham on rye. And don't forget to hold the mustard. Of course, my lord. It will be done. There will be no mistakes this time. Yes, my lord. Um... I gotta go. But basically, that's the effect that we're gonna do. So I originally decided to do this effect because I was challenged to. Jamie over at Film Empire, a up-and-coming young YouTuber who uses HitFilm and does a lot of his stuff on HitFilm, challenged me to what he called an effects war. An effect war. You challenge me, I challenge you. We try to create the effect that we challenge each other to do, plus we create the one that we uh, challenged also, uh, and then we put them up on YouTube. So it is my turn to do this, and he challenged me to make this hologram effect. I challenged him, by the way, to do the spider crawling effect, and that was a video that I put up a couple of weeks ago, so it'll be interesting to see how his looks, but he challenged me to do the hologram effect. So what I did was I went right into pro and I jumped in. I started making all these different skits. I had several of them that I made uh, and I just would slap the hologram effect, which is included with the pro version of HitFilm, right onto it. And I'm like, well, that was easy. And then I do another tutorial. Hmm, that was easy. Then I do another video. Well, this is a piece of cake. So the problem is, is that it really wasn't much of a tutorial. Just take the effect, drag it on there, and you're good to go. So I decided instead to do this in the express version. And that made it a little bit harder because there's a lot of steps that you have to do. What that means is, is if you can afford to buy the pro version and you don't have the pro version, you should definitely go out and buy the pro version. It is really, really worth it. The free version, the express version is a really great version, but I got to tell you, the pro version is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and, and the, the free version is good, but nothing compared to the pro version. So if you can get the pro version, definitely get it. Uh, otherwise, here's how we do this in the Express version. Uh, first of all, I fill myself up against a green screen, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to make it into a composite shot and click OK. And here I am against the green screen, which I then added a background. What I will do now is, is I will create um, my uh, place where the hologram starts. Let's say it starts about here. I'm going to slice this just to mark it, and then I'm going to go until about where it ends. And it ends about right there. Okay, so pretty much, and you know, I would be a little more, but this area here is where it happens. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to track where that is throughout the shot too, so that way it really sells it. So I'm going to create a new point, and this is going to be called position of hologram point, right? I'm going to always label my stuff. I want to go ahead and bring this to here, bring this to here, because this is only where the hologram is actually going to be. And I am going to come back uh, to exactly where that starts. In the part where the hologram, the footage itself, I'm going to twirl it open, and under Tracks, I'm going to click the plus icon. Notice that it brings it me to the Layer tab. I want to go back to the viewer as soon as I'm done. I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll in a little bit. And I'm going to come over here and just put this on my pinky, and then I'm going to start tracking forward by hitting this little track forward key. And it starts tracking forward. I'm not going to bore you and make you watch the entire track. So as soon as it's done, I'll be back. Okay, now that the track is done, what I am going to do is I'm going to assign that data to my position of the hologram point. So now if I go back to my viewer and I open up that, you can see that all of that data is now in here. And if I actually highlight that and scrub through it, you can see that that actually follows along with the, um, with, you know, where the hologram is going to be. So now, 
under the media panel, I have imported some Darth Vader transparent video footage. Now, where did I get this? Easy. I filmed it. I put, I put myself, I own a Darth Vader costume. I know. Shocking, right? And uh, I filmed myself in front of a green screen, and then I exported it as a transparent video. If you would like to know how to export a transparent video, Aiden over at Digital Blast, another young and up-and-coming YouTube hit film user, has made a video on how to do that. It's a nifty little video, so please feel free to go check it out. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below. You can learn how to make your own transparent video also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video footage and I'm going to drag it in here. And there it is. It's a little big and he's also facing the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is twirl it open under the transform properties scale. I'm going to unlink and I'm going to make it negative 25. That will flip him around and by 25 and that will make him smaller as well. Then I'm just going to grab him and drag him to where he needs to be and make sure he's in exactly the right place there. And there you go. Now, Normally, holograms have sort of a bluish tint to them. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to search in the effects panel for Hue Colorize, and I'm going to drag the Hue Colorize effect on. Twirling it open, I am going to set the Hue number to 190, and that makes sort of a bluish tint color to it. Okay. Also, normally there are some scan lines in there, so I am going to search for the d the video game high school effect right here. And I'm going to drag this down onto Darth Vader. And it makes him look really weird. We're going to change a few of the things in here. Starting with, I'm going to... I don't need any of the pixelation, so I'm going to zero that out. I also don't need any wavy lines, so I'm going to zero that out. Um, but I do need horizontal lines, and so I'm going to twirl that open under the inverted line part. I'm going to re adjust that number to 100 and you can see that I've got it. Now the strength is currently set at 50. I could make it stronger. I could make it none. I'm going to leave it at 50 because I think I like that number. Um, but again, that's sort of to taste, right? And pretty much that's it. There's your hologram. Now you'll notice he's not transparent enough because you can usually see through it. So I will drop that transparency down to about 60%, okay? And that's it. Now, here's a little extra thing if you want. If you want to add a little bit of a light flare or something like that, you can add that too. It's pretty simple to do. I'm going to create a new plane layer. Call it lighting, okay? I am going to actually make it into its own composite shot. This will be important if I have to mask it, which I probably will. I'm going to... Uh, add a light flare to it, and then I'm going to drag that light flare down below it so that it comes out of the bottom like a projector shooting up. And then I'm going to add a zoom blur effect, right? Uh, and I'm going to drop that below that, and I'm going to ramp up the strength of that, and then I'm going to drop it down below so that it sort of looks like it's shining upwards like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Okay, now back in the original footage, what I want to do is, is I want to change the blend mode of that maybe to add, okay? And then I'm going to grab the whole thing and just sort of bring it in a little bit, position it correctly here, resize it so that it looks like it's sitting where it needs to be sort of a thing, right? Now the problem is there's a little bit of a hard edge there. So what I will do is, is I will create a mask that will basically cover that, okay? And the mask will be on this thing itself. And I'm going to go about there to about there to there to there, okay? And then I'm just going to feather that mask a lot, right? A lot under shape. Uh, I will just ramp that up until I feel like it looks pretty good. Yeah, maybe something like that. Um, just to get the idea. Ooh, I kind of like it. Looks pretty good. Now, you don't have to do that, um, but you can if you want. Now, don't forget, you will need to uh, parent both of these to the uh, position of a hologram 
uh, thing. Oh, whoops, and guess what? It, he changed my, he flipped Darth Vader around when he did that. So we want to re reset that. And now it's good to go. It will actually follow wherever my hand goes. You can see that the, that the, um, the hologram goes. I would have the light come on first, opacity to zero up to say 60 uh, or 100. Yeah, and you could, I could knock that opacity down, by the way. It doesn't have to be quite as bright if I don't want it to be. Um, maybe 80. You know, it just sort of depends on your background and your, you know, what, what else you have going on there. Um, and then after the light comes on, then you might uh, keyframe the opacity of uh, your hologram itself uh, when it comes on. And then you would remove the hologram first by knocking that down to zero, and then the light would go away sort of after that, uh, and shoo, like that kind of a thing. So, you know, just, just you know, to have it come on and off, that's how I would do it. So, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. By the way, the um, Darth Vader voice, I did completely inside hit film. I didn't use uh, Audacity or Gold Wave or anything. If you're interested in how I did the Darth Vader voice, Feel free to drop a comment asking, and I will be delighted to show you how I did it. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.